Physique University, your source for all things physique enhancement. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Elite Physique University. I'm John Gorman, your host, joined by Jason Theobald on this nice, cold Sunday. Jason, how's your Sunday, man? You know what? It's, it's been good. Church, uh, first watch, uh, coffees, and just uh, did a little bit of work, and uh, now I'm chatting with you. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it kind of teased us. We're, our weather's pretty much the same. You're in Kentucky. I'm in Missouri. Yep. We're probably like six hours, seven hours apart. It's like, it's real warm for a few days. And all of a sudden, like today yep. here, it's fucking 30 degrees. Yes, correct. Yeah. I mean, it was cold as shit walking into church at nine. Um, and then like we had a few 65 days where I'd walk out of the gym and just stay in my tank top and shorts. So it's like trying to warm up, but yeah, like in the Midwest, everyone, you know, our Midwest listeners know it's like, we swung 30 degrees once last week uh, from highs. So, Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. I mean, we, we leave the cold here, and then we still get into the weird ups and downs, and then it's like fucking tornadoes and shit in May. And oh, yeah. So. yeah, we don't get much of that, thank God. Yeah, it kind of hits us before it gets to you. I mean, I, this new house I bought, it's, it's uh, got a tornado shelter in the actual oh, in the ground. Yeah, yeah, in our garage, so like it's perfect. I mean, we've oh, had wow. two twice, so. Damn. Yeah. So anyway, away from the cold and then we get tornado season. So, nice. <laughs> hey, man, I, I do want to mention, Jason, we're almost to 200 reviews. We're at like 197 right now. Nice. And uh, we just want to say thank you guys. And what we're going to I'm just going to go ahead and tell people now what we're going to do is once we get to 200 reviews, we're going to take four weeks and every review that comes in, all the reviews past and then especially the ones that come in new. We're going to have a contest, and the winner of that contest is going to come from the reviews, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you leave a review, and then take a screenshot and tag us on social in your stories. That way that we can see it, and I'm going to pick one person, and they're going to get one free year's prep with me, which is – you know, that's not a cheap thing. It's if someone's making no. payments to me, it's about 2,500 bucks is what I charge. So, um, and whether that's contest prep with your lifestyle and you just want to maximize your physique, whatever your goal is, you're going to be able to work with me for a year and we're going to give one of those spots away. So guys, right now is a perfect time. Hit pause, yeah. go hit those stars. Um, listen, I don't care. I, you can leave a two star review. I mean, I probably wonder why, cause we've had all all five stars <laughs> but uh it was, oh, i bet they would tell you if they click two yeah i mean hey w- <laughs> just leave the on- they suck yeah somebody pissed but um just be honest leave us a review and then screenshot it and tag us on social and we'll be we'll be picking a winner here in the next four weeks so um the other thing too if you ever want to send us questions topics guests Anything like that, hit me up on Instagram at team underscore Gorman. Just shoot me a DM there. I keep a list of all the Q&As. We're going to do one here in another six or seven episodes. Those are always fun. So hit me up there if you need anything. And then, uh, Jason, I want to transition into something kind of new for us this week, and then we'll get into our topic of uh, body fat set point. So uh, you've got the Physique Education Collective coming up, and you still have some tickets for that, and you guys are still holding the event, correct? We're still holding it as of now. Like we haven't really seen any reason to, uh, to cancel it. Like seems like people are still signing up and, and going with it. And, um, so yeah, we're still having it. Uh, great topics. Um, we're going to, we're going to do cholesterol, um, some HRV stuff, which I know is kind of a new topic. So if you're interested in that, we're going to touch on, um, responsible female ped usage. Um, Lauren Conlon has a cool presentation, uh, with macros and, adjusting different things with that and so you know come on out you know it's um it's a not a not a pricey ticket and you learn a lot so it'll be in nashville too a cool city yeah you know what i like what you guys are doing with that because you know we've kind of we've got three pretty distinct different places that you can hear kind of all of us speak you know the physique summit we're a very very hardcore bodybuilding um, conference um you guys are, are still all about bodybuilding you cover a lot of functional med stuff um, things like you said, cholesterol and hormones, blood work, yep. and no one else is really doing that in, in our part of the industry. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then you and I, we're not going to announce the date yet because we're working on right. getting that finalized, but our very first seminar is going to be a full weekend. I mean, we're going to yes. have six talks and it's going to be unlike anything else because it's going to be very, very bodybuilding specific. And it's just going to be me and you, and we're just going to hammer down and we're going to record a podcast live. It's going to be a blast. So 
guys, there's some really good places you can go hear us talk. And I definitely recommend the Physique Education Collective. So you can just hit Jason up. He'll send you a link and uh, you can get signed up or you can have Jeff, Jeff Black. Jeff can definitely take care of it. Yeah. You. And they can even go to physiqueeducationcollective.com and sign up right there. We'd love to have you. And, you know, we always say once you come, you're part of the family. You know, you need help with something, we answer. So um, check us out. Yeah, definitely. And and I have a talk coming up, a camp coming up with the NAMBF president, uh, Ryan Irwin, and my business partner, Cliff Wilson. Uh, it's pretty much an NAMBF camp um, that Ryan and I teamed up on, and it's basically sold out. We're going to have around 50 people in Iowa. Nice. That's this coming weekend, so about a week from now. Um, nice. And we still are going to hold that. I do want to bring that up with everything going on with the coronavirus that's still going to happen. So guys, if you're listening and you're signed up, don't worry. If you're wanting tickets, we're pretty much sold out. So maybe on the next one and uh, we're looking forward to it. So man, shit's just kind of crazy. I know people don't want to hear us talk about the coronavirus. And honestly, every time I see people post about it, I'm kind of fucking sick of it myself. But um, it's just one of those things, guys, just kind of keep your eyes peeled and make sure I, you know, you know, we got people doing shows coming up. You're, you're prepping Leslie. She's got her IP yeah. pro debut. Like we're all, we're all kind of watching and trying to keep our eyes out on everything. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those things where, um, preppers, you know, your immune system's down. So just make wise choices, you know, um, other than that, uh, I'm kind of going about my day as usual, um, until I get sick and then I would self quarantine myself. But, um, here in Kentucky, a lot of people are kind of just going about their days as usual. So I'm just nose to the ground, kind of watching things. I know Trump speaks tonight, but other than that, we don't really need to get too much into it. No, not really. Uh, we're pretty much good here. I've got a home gym. So no matter what happens, I'm, I'm pretty much good to go. I stay prepared. You know, there is one thing I I would like to say though. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm real big on people, you know, having a savings, um, account set up yeah. for money to live off of because you know, no matter how bad this goes no matter how bad it hits the economy like like if you're someone listening right now and it's really going to fuck you bad and i'm sorry i'm not i'm not trying to talk down to you but maybe you really need to think about setting up a savings account really managing your money because it's shit like this that can really get people and i know i've always thought that way for the last 10 years i've saved up money because I'm always thinking worst case scenario, you know, people are thinking about health and stuff like that, but don't forget your fucking wallet because that's, that's important guys. Um, Jason, let's go ahead and jump into this topic. So this dude, this is a cool topic. And as we were talking before we started recording, we don't even know where we both stand on this, which to me is fine because we don't care. Like we'll disagree on the show, but we're both open-minded to each other's kind of take on this. So let's start off. Um, and talk about the body fat set point theory and both of us define it. I can, I can just give you my real quick definition. Yeah, go for it. Because it is a theory and a theory is something that hasn't been proven by science guys. Like there's no data out there to support it research. Um, so it's kind of a theory, but that's okay because there are a lot of theories out there that we still see and believe in the trenches. At least I do. The science is kind of behind the times on like no one's going to put a bunch of money into testing the body fat set point theory, at least not that I've seen so far. So what I think the body fat set point theory is this idea that we all have this range of body fat, um, especially the lower end of the range. that's kind of hard to break through. So I'll just use myself as an example. And I've seen this with numerous clients. You know, I can I can get to about 200 pounds. I'm 207 now. I can stay between 200 and 220 and my body is pretty comfortable. I know that's crazy because that's a big range, but you know, if I get really fucking fat, I'm like 220. If I diet down, I can get to about 200 pounds before I really start seeing my hormones start to get, you know, into a shitty place, testosterone lower. I just feel shitty. I'm super, super hungry. And it becomes hard for me to break through. Like my body wants to stall there. I have to really go low calorie add a lot of cardio and just be super accurate. And then once I break past that 200, then I go ahead and I start dropping down. But sometimes to break past that 200 for me is just really hard. And with some other people, you know, it may only be, you know, 10 pounds from stage. You know, my stage weight would be like 180 to 185 if I got on stage right now, probably 180. Um, But some people, you know, if they were in my body, it might only be 190. And it's just that really hard area to break through and get down to. And then, you know, below that is just something that for most people that we think that it's not maintainable. You know, you think about somebody getting completely, completely shredded and it's just not maintainable hormonally, um, physically, you're just, you feel shitty. 
that's kind of my definition of it. Jason, I know you probably have a completely different take, and we're going to touch on assisted versus non-assisted or natural athletes. But what's what's kind of your take or your definition of it? Sure. Um, <clears throat> my thought on it has always been, you know, a body fat set point is, you know, about a range where um, – your body kind of just settles into uh, a range no matter kind of how much efforts you put into it really. Um, you could, you know, you've got to eat your calories up to a certain amount so you're not starving and, and, and angry and, and, and having bad hormones. And by doing that, no matter what you do, uh, your body is going to kind of just even out at a certain body fat that is a range that your body wants to be at. Um, that's the way I look at it. Now, do I believe that you can fight it and change it? I do. And we're going to get into that. Yeah. So that's, that's really the thing. So let's, let's kind of set this up. Um, you know, I know myself and other people, whenever we first started out, started dieting, I kind of had a misconception of what it meant to get lean. So like I would see people on the cover of magazines, whether it was something like Iron Man or if it was Muscle Mag, whatever, I just wanted to be shredded and have abs. I think every dude wants that who doesn't have abs. Um, you know, 100%. I just, wanted, yeah, like that's, that was the thing. Like that was, you know, it's like some, you, it's like having a brand new fucking Ferrari, right? It's oh, like yeah. one thing that like takes so much and you just want it so bad. And I always thought about that. So when I dieted down it and got, you know, to the area, I could see my abs for a little bit it took so much and I dieted down. Then I, of course, afterwards I freaked out and lost my mind because you know, I had post post show eating post diet binge rebound. And then I gained fat back and I thought, fuck man, like I just dieted and spent 20 weeks doing all this shit. And I got down there and now all of a sudden, you know, my body fat just wants to come back really, really fast. And you know, even when someone doesn't eat a shit ton, I think it's tied to this because your metabolism slow. We'll get into all that. But the misconception is what I want to talk about. A lot of people think, I just want to look like that person on the cover of the magazine, or I want to look like this IG D-list celebrity. And what they don't realize is a lot of the times for certain people, that look is just not something that's maintainable. Would you, would you think that's accurate? Would you agree with that, Jason? I think, it, I mean, there's definitely going to be a genetic component to it. You know, I mean, I, my very first time seeing my abs, I did uh, Body for Life and it took me six weeks and they were ripped. And then from there on, I always had abs, like no matter what I did. So, you know, it's part genetic, right? I mean, from that point on, I learned how to eat right. But at the same time, even when I'd have bad days and come off and not, you know, do the right things, it was very hard for me to get rid of my abs. So I, I think part of there's, there's a genetic component to it, just like anything. So yes, there's going to be a, a sector of, of the population that has to diet the shit out of themselves to see abs. And then they have to stay super low cow and suffer. And then there's, I think there's a, a sect that, that can maintain it easier, but I, I have a theory on how anyone can do it. Um, but it is going to be more work for some people. So I think the answer to your question is yes. Yeah. So we're, we're going to get into those theories and especially your take on it. Tell me, let's go ahead and let the listeners know what are some of the people that you know are just not going to be able to maintain that shredded, shredded look the first time yeah. dieting, like their yeah. first time. Yeah. Um, they're going to be the people who definitely have some endomorphic qualities to their body. Um, they can have some mesomorphic because I, I, I mean, thinking of, of you, John, I mean, I think you have some mesomorphic qualities. You're not a pure endomorph by any means, but you definitely have some endomorphic metabolism qualities. And I think uh, that person who, who has some endomorph in them is going to really struggle at least after one diet phase to maintain it because they probably had to work the shit out of their body to get there to begin with. And therefore the rebound is so much worse because hormones are lower, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think anyone who has that endomorph tendencies are going to struggle, um, especially after only one diet phase. Yeah, I agree. So talk, talk about the person on the opposite end of the spectrum, more of an ecto, especially an ecto meso. Um, yeah. about how it's different for them. Yeah. I mean, I'm an ecto mezzo. Um, and like I said, after six weeks of, of body for life, like I already had my abs and then I never really lost them even in a bulk. And, you know, after my first show, I didn't get, I mean, I got pretty lean, but I would certainly not call it shredded. And I did the same mistakes that everyone did. You know, like I remember going with my girlfriend to someone's house and they had a bowl of M&M's sitting there. 
And I asked him if I could have some. And it was a big bowl. And I ate the whole damn bowl. And then we went and got some other shit. And it, I mean, you know, I, I, I ate kind of like a dumbass for a while post-show. But I remember I only put on 12 pounds uh, in six weeks. And I was eating like a complete asshole. And I still could flex and have abs. And so, you know, again, there's a genetic component to it. And that's an ectomezzo for you. You know, it's like. I never had abs though walking around, even as a soccer player. Like people always think, oh, you probably just had abs. And it's like, actually I didn't. I mean, my belly wasn't fat, but I didn't have abs walking around like some of my buddies who played soccer with me. Um, but I wasn't fat either. And so I had a lower body fat set point than, than other people to begin with. So like, you know, we got to look at how low is your body fat set point to begin with when you started dieting. It's just like an IFBB pro who starts out at 170 pounds instead of they starting out at 120 like I did. Well, we both put on about 90 pounds of lean tissue, but now they're 260 on stage and I'm 200, you know what I mean? So it's all about where you started too on how far you can get in all this, right? Um, but yeah, ectomezos will, will definitely be way more likely to be able to, after one diet phase, hold on to it and keep abs. Yeah, and we're going to talk about what it takes to hold on to it here in just a minute. Yeah, we are. Um, and, and I think a good point to kind of take away from that that we're trying to say is you need to be very, very aware of the type of physique, the type of genetics that you have. Because I know a lot of people that are especially endo, they get really, really discouraged when they see the opposite yes. end of the spectrum. And what it is, guys, it just comes down to educating yourself on what's realistic for you. And that's really what we're trying to do with this show because right. this is such a big topic because you've got outliers on the left and right and you got a lot of people in the middle. So like for us to give you an exact answer for everyone is going to be really hard. Jason, you know what? You nailed it earlier. You talked about it really depends on how hard the diet phase is. And if it's a really, really hard one, you have to diet down for a long time, real low calorie, that it kind of just really shuts your, it, it doesn't shut your hormones down, but it really kicks them right in the nuts. Let's talk about dieting's effect on metabolism and other hormones. I'll, I'll go ahead and start with the thyroid yeah, yeah. if that's cool. Um, Do it. You know, the longer someone has to diet down, the more their metabolism has to slow down. So if someone has 60 pounds to lose, for example, to, to diet down and see their abs, we're just going to use that as kind of an example. Like we're all dieting to see our abs, right? Um, and they have 60 pounds to lose. Well, as you diet down and you, you weigh less, your metabolism has to slow down because you're going to lose for the most part, especially naturally. We're going to lose a little bit of muscle if you have that much fat to lose. And as you lose muscle and weight, especially, your thyroid has to secrete less thyroid hormone because if it didn't, it would stay elevated and your body temperature would actually rise. So it's kind of just the way your body works. The less you weigh, the more your thyroid has to slow down while you're dieting um, for the most part. So your metabolism at the end is going to be slower. And the more you have to lose, the harder that's going to take a hit. The longer you have yep. to diet, the harder that's going to take a hit. Um, and then there's, the, then there's other hormones like leptin and testosterone. Jason, if you want to touch on those, but is there anything you want to talk about with metabolism? No, I think you summed that up pretty well without beating a dead horse. I mean, you know, it's just about how hard was that diet and the length of time for how bad the state your body's going to be in when you start reversing your calories. And like we talked about having a bad post-show rebound, which almost everyone does their first time. Um, you know, as far as testosterone, you were right. Like the hormones don't get shut completely off. Not everyone. Uh, I've seen it happen, but most of the time, like, you know, we're looking at men who are naturals down in the hundreds. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, like a man should probably be around 600, 700 if they're in their twenties. So dropping down to a hundred throughout the course of a diet, I mean, you're dropping drastically. Um, so that's big time affected. Um, you know, and so, and then your leptin, you know, things are going to be screaming, eat, 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 eat. So you have to understand that post show, uh, the body, cause your body fat's so low, your body fat's telling you to eat. So all those things you have to understand is kind of going on in your body as you're pushing it. And the longer you diet, the longer those, uh, signals are going to be, the harder those signals are going to hit you post show. And then the harder your testosterone is going to be affected. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, I guess this would be a good time. We're going to talk about it a little bit more later on, but you know, that's a little bit different though. If someone is using HRT, if they're using oh, testosterone. Yeah. So, you know, if you would go ahead and talk about the difference between someone sure. dieting to have, and they have HRT to start and they have 60 pounds to lose. Yeah. So, you know, if someone has HRT or they're running a cycle and they have 60 pounds to lose, 
some of the the shutdown or let's not call it shutdown the slowdown of you know testosterone production um that's not going to happen because number one you're using exogenous hormones and by keeping testosterone up as we've touched on another show you're also going to thwart cortisol because they're an inverse relationship as cortisol goes up testosterone goes down um so as a natural you by by controlling cortisol, which I use our cordies, you can help keep your testosterone in better and better shape. But be that as it may, if you are using exogenous hormones, you're not going to have that shutdown or like I said, that slowdown of hormone production. Um, and therefore, you know, if you're keeping cortisol lower, thyroid's not going to take as big of a hit. So all in all, you're going to, you're going to maintain a more effective system. And therefore you might not even need a diet break to get the 60 pounds off. But like dieting 60 pounds off of a natural, especially if they don't have a great, you know, uh, motor, you might need a diet break in there at some point. And that's for another show. But my point is you can, you can diet that off with, with real minimal effects to your hormonal system because you're using exogenous outside hormones. Yeah. And you know, one other thing that just made me think of is, you know, someone that's using HRT or, or they're running a cycle they're not really losing muscle like someone uh -huh. that's natural is. So nope. what's that tell you? That tells you that you st you don't slow the metabolism down as right. much because you're still holding on to more lean tissue. So that means less cardio, more yes. food you get to eat, yes. and a faster metabolism, which is always yep. always what we all want. Like that's the fucking unicorn shit. And right? you know, if you're doing it smart in the off season and you're only using least amount necessary, and then you end up hitting a cycle, you're actually gaining muscle as you prep. Right. I don't even care if you're in a deficit. There are certain, you know, compounds that will allow you to gain muscle. And so you're getting almost more efficient. Now, am I saying that calories go up on an assisted athlete? No, not always. They definitely still go down and it's a bitch to get in shape. But, but there is that time where it's actually going up, especially at the beginning of a diet. For, for sure. All right, let's, let's go ahead and get into the real nuts and bolts of this because there's two different ways that we can separate this, Jason. We can talk about dieting to compete and get on stage, and we're talking about getting fucking skinless. We're, we're yeah. talking about getting in true stage shape, not what you see a lot of people at the state level show up or a lot of natural bodybuilding shows. I'm talking about fucking skinless, 100% stage ready. Or someone that's dieting to lose, like I said, 60 pounds. They want to see the outline of their abs for the first time there's going to be a big difference in being able to maintain those two looks. So I'll just use myself and you as an example. I think those are perfect examples. Right now I'm dieting down. I'm, I'm the person that's going to push this and we're going to see this over the next few months. We're going to see if my body's going to be able to hold on to, you know, 8% body fat as I diet down. And then you're somebody that diets down to get all the way ready for stage. How much harder is that going to be on someone's hormonal systems and the ability to maintain when they're dieting to get the stage ready versus dieting like me down to eight, nine percent? Yeah, I mean, two totally different things. So, you know, generally speaking, the, the lower that you have to get your body fat uh, down to, the, the worse it's going to take a hit on your hormones. And also, though, it, I, think it's, I think it's fair to say, though, if someone had to lose 30 pounds to get to eight percent, that's still a, a, a bitch. And that might take as much of a toll as someone who started at 12% and has to go down to, you know, four or, or five. Probably not, but I'm just saying it, it could if they had to lose a lot. But generally speaking, the lower you guys take that body fat down, the worse that you're going to, you know, you're, it's the worse it's going to be on your hormonal system, your, your, your thyroid, cortisol, all of it. Yeah. And it's one of those things. Um, what I just want to say to our listeners, if you're natural, especially, you're not going to be able to maintain a stage ready look. Um, I mean, naturals, a hundred percent stage ready for most people. You're just not going to be able to, because your hormones are going to be in the shitter. You know, there's, there's something I like to say to my clients that are 95% natural athletes, whenever they're deep in the trenches. And I mean, they're struggling. Like yeah, I might have a female 1100 calories. She's, she's down like two pounds from stage. And like, we're really pushing and grinding. She's sending me pictures, her hair's all fucking frizzled. And like, you know what I mean? Like we all know yeah. what it takes to really get that way. Um, when someone is that bad and they're starving and they feel like shit and they have no sex drive and they're questioning why the fuck they're even doing that. I take that, that email that they're sending me. Right. And I point out to them, I'm like, listen, I want you to remember how you feel right now in this moment in time. 
And when you send me an email in four months and you're bitching because you feel like you're too fat, I want you to remember what it felt like to be this fucking lean. <laughs> right. and, and you're laughing, but you know, I, I mean, you do, oh, you, yeah. you and I are both kind of straight shooters. So like oh, yeah, I yeah. tell people that and I'm like, I want you to fucking remember. And then I remind them later on when they do email me that. And the reason is I want them to understand that is not a maintainable look. Would you, would you agree for that? For, with yeah, natural? Yeah, I mean, natural or, or enhanced, you're not going to be able to maintain stage look year round. Um, but, you know, I do believe natural or not, you can, you can lower it. You can lower what your, what your body set, what your, your body fat set point was from when you first picked up a weight and where your body wanted to be natural or not. Um, I just, I, I believe it can be done and I've seen it done. Um, I don't know when you want to talk about how, but I have, a, I have my opinions on that. Um, but I, I think that no matter what it can be done over time. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to talk about, um, you know what, let go ahead and transition into that, Jason, you go ahead and take okay. it. And I'm going to talk about, uh, our friend Jason Wells, who to me is the yeah. extreme opposite because I know there yes. are a lot of people listening that, Maybe you're not like Jason who need you know, he lost 220, 230 pounds, yep. but your coaches and, and your, your trainers out there, and you need to understand that extreme side of it. So go ahead and get, kind of give your take first, Jason, on, on maintaining yeah. a leaner physique. So what I have found with working with thousands of athletes, natural or not, is that to really get to the point where you can stay below what your natural body fat set point was when you first kind of got into the sport, it takes a lot of diet phases and each diet phase, you need to be getting yourself leaner than you were. And if you do that and then do a smart reverse, what I kind of find is at least with myself, my body's going to gain eight to 12 pounds of body fat back, probably no matter what I do. So with that said, the first time I dieted, let's say I got to 7%. Well, when I gained 8 to 12 pounds of fat back, it's not as impressive. But each time as I get lower and get better at dieting for shows and I get better at the reverse, now when I get done with the show, I literally go and have a steak, uh, maybe some fries, a dessert, and by the next morning, I'm back on plan just because that's what I like to eat and it feels good to me. So like, I just don't, I don't stock shit in my bag. Like, oh my God, I've never had Reese's cups. So I need those in my bag as soon as I get off stage and have people waiting for cupcakes and all this bullshit. I don't do all that. So when people ask, how am I this lean in the off season? It's because I've, I've mastered the craft of getting leaner than I was ever before. Multiple times I've dieted hardcore for shows over 20 times. And then I, I've mastered the reverse. So even if I'm gaining eight pounds of body fat back each time, it's being added back to a physique that I got leaner than the prior time. So it's going to stay and look leaner. And I was still doing that when, before I ever touched HRT at age 34, as I told you, I started, I didn't have abs, but by then I'd already dieted probably 10 for 10 shows. I was maintaining abs year round, um, as a natural athlete. So Again, but that's smart reversing and getting leaner every time I get on stage. I think it's going to be harder for people that don't get on stage much and they only diet maybe to 8% each time. You've got to rip that body fat down and get peeled more and more each time. And then when you add back that normal amount of fat, it's always going to look a little better. And then you're going to keep adding muscle so the skin's going to get tighter and pulled tighter. And it all builds, whether you're natural or not. But it's, but it's got to be a year-round endeavor. And then yeah. I believe it can be done. That's, yeah, that's you know, how it's you, you know, I, I would agree with that. Um, definitely because I I've seen that with my clients, you know, right. numerous, numerous times. The one thing that I will say, and I, this is where I'm going to put my natural bodybuilding coach hat on again, as I seem to do a lot on this show. One thing I've noticed with people that they need to pay attention to, and I'm sure you'll agree with this is once you reverse and you get yourself to that look that you want to maintain, you really, especially natural athletes, you need to look at your fucking labs. You need to make sure because yeah. if you are maintaining a lot leaner physique than you normally have before, you can still maintain it. But I've seen plenty of my athletes come back and their testosterone is still low. And that's one of those things that, that is in some part tied to, to body fat levels. So if you are too low and you're experiencing some of those symptoms, it's so crucial to look at labs. But man, I'm telling you, I bet I 90% you. of people that compete don't look natural athletes. They don't look at their fucking labs. No, they don't ever. Like, it's amazing to me. Like some of the people that I follow online, they're like, 
oh, I just kind of looked at my labs for the first time ever. And I'm like, you're like 36 years old. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. To me, it's the most important when it comes to trying to think about maintaining a leaner body fat yeah. level. It's all tied to hormones. Like who gives a shit if you look good, if your testosterone's in the shitter, like you might need right. to put another five pounds of fat on and get your, get your testosterone where it needs to be. Because here's the problem. You stay too lean too long and your testosterone stays down like that. You know, what's that, what's that doing to your health long term? So it's just something I, I recommend all natural athletes do. And Jason, I think really what we need to do dude, is we need to do a complete discussion on blood work, like literally break mm -hmm. it down, take all those recommended labs that you talked about at the physique yeah. summit, your, your complete breakdown. Yeah. Um, and I'll chime in too. And I think we just need to do that. So look for that on a future episode. Um, I do want to jump in and talk about Jason Wells. So Jason Wells, yeah. like I said earlier, is somebody, one of my best friends. Um, he's lost like 220, 230 pounds. I can't remember at this point. But we started in 2017, and we got it off of him in chunks. Because here's the thing. If you take so – here's what I see a lot of heavy, heavy people. I see the mistake that trainers make that are helping them, or they make trying to diet themselves. They try and lose it all in one fucking fell swoop. And that just, first of all, it's just not possible because your metabolism is going to tank. You can't just lose 220 pounds and get it all off like you want to get it off. You're going to lose so much muscle for being in a deficit for so long. Your cortisol is going to be so high. I've seen so many people that still have a decent amount of body fat left on them coming to me. I look at their labs. They're fucking low testosterone. So it's just that hard, hard dieting for a long time to lose 220 pounds. It's something that they need to do in chunks. So how does someone maintain a lower body fat set point that's like Jason? Well, we're actually doing that right now. Mm -hmm. I would, I would diet, I would diet him, you know, for the first time we dieted like, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 months. And then we reversed. And during his reverse, when you still have a lot of body fat guys, we've talked about on the show, when you're very, very strict and you reverse, you can keep losing body fat, even though your yes. calories go up, your metabolism speeds up. We've talked about it. Cortisol yeah, goes Yeah, because insulin sensitivity is amazing at that point. Yeah, yeah. So we got another, you know, 30 pounds off him reversing, and then we held that for a little while. We held his calories at 3,000, and then boom, we pulled the plug. We dieted another, yep. you know, 40, 50, 60 pounds, whatever it was. Then we reversed, and we dropped a little bit more and maintained it. Like, you have to do it in blocks when you have that much to lose. Now, he got to the point to where – he had so much loose skin, there was nothing we could do about it. So right. what happened? He went and got skin removal surgery. Good for him. Yep. He maintained everything. Like his diet was on point. He didn't gain any body fat. And now we are one week into the diet. And now he's to the point where he weighs like 240 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I told him, let's get 20 pounds off of you. And let's see how you're looking. Let's look at your labs. Right. We just looked at his labs. We're going to look at his labs again here in about 20 weeks. And it's one of those things you have to pay close attention to that. But for him to maintain a leaner physique, you've got to give your body time to adjust to kind of each body fat level that you get to. Would you agree with that, Jason? I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree with that. And, you know, I, I think I touched on it before when I was talking about losing a ton of weight, but, you know, doing it naturally, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to have some times where you go into maintenance um, or even a slight surplus um, or else the hormones are just going to take too much of a dive. And like you started off with your, you know, you lose too much muscle. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. I do want to talk about, I, I do want to talk about you and then some other people here. Once you get there, there are some things that will help you maintain a leaner physique. And yeah. your, your prime example, like when I came and stayed at your house in like July or August, yeah. whenever it was, and you're still super lean right now. Um, there are some things that will kind of help with that. Things like yes. GBAs and, and other supplements. Go ahead and talk about some of the keys for you maintaining sure. a leaner physique. Sure. So as, as listeners even know, I am on HRT. Um, I get 200 megs of test. Uh, and 100 megs of DECA a week. So keep that in mind. Uh, the DECA is light. It's just for my joints. Um, and it's all through a doctor. So that's just just being out there. Um, I take uh, injectable carnitine. Everyone has heard me talk about that. It It's basically throwing fat to my mitochondria to be used as energy, just nonstop. Um, and it's made a huge impact on my physique and my development. And, um, that's, that's a huge thing of mine. And I, I don't keep it a secret. Um, 
Racehorse Meds got shut down, so you'll need to go through Synth- Synthetech. Uh, that's with a K. Uh, dot com now. Um, and I use GDAs year round. Um, I use our Thyro Boost year round. I was a guy whose TSH always ran high. It should be between be between one and two. My T three, it was weird on some. If I was really pushing calories, my T three would be middle of the range. If I had even close to just maintenance, uh, I, it would be towards the low end. So I use our Thyroboost year round. Um, one cap just for maintenance. Two if I want to start shredding a little bit. Um, and then of course I, I really had to do a deep dive into my digestive tract. I, I think a lot of people know that. Um, my digestion wasn't always great. And I don't think I, I think I was having malabsorption issues. And once I kind of really committed to only eating the foods that helped me digest well, taking, you know, my pancreatinin enzymes, my betanes, um, it, it all, it all started to flow together for me. So don't neglect your gut. Um, don't neglect your thyroid. If you want to have a good set point, um, don't neglect your sleep. Um, got to keep cortisol down. You've got to keep your insulin sensitivity. Well, like John said before GDAs, I use our GDA max. Um, and then the, the, uh, injectable L carnitine, another one I use a lot that is not going to impact blood work, uh, but it will help, um, androgen receptor sensitivity is a product called abolic. Um, it, I use it with my women, which is amazing for my bikini women, but I use it myself um, I do eight caps a day, but you can start at four. Um, this, you will see yourself get leaner from this. You will see a better pump. My bikini girls always love it. I have not seen it impact blood work negatively. I'm not even sure any of the ingredients in it are banned by natural organizations yet, but you need to check that. I don't have many natural people uh, in those type of orgs. I do have plenty of natural people, but they stay in the NPC mainly. Um, but abolic has been a big help added in with my HRT. And one last piece on the l carn if you're a new listener to the show, we've touched on this before, but it, it increases the androgen receptor sensitivity big time. So what this means is any hormones you take will get to attach to the receptor more than they would have before passing out of the body. And, you know, when you work with the freaks of freaks, I believe they have intense um, androgen receptor sensitivity. That's what I think makes them better than the rest of us because I've seen them and I know what certain gear certain people take and you're like, holy shit, they look amazing. And I believe it's because they have, we're blessed with better androgen receptor sensitivity. And my theory is, is that l helps even that playing field. And so even on a TRT dosage, my physique has, has expounded leaps and bounds. And I get accused at the gym, like by the young kids, they always like, oh, so you, you are on that trend. You, you do this, you do that, you take that clean year round. I'm like, no, no, I don't. Um, so, you know, I, I think that when you look at the body as a whole and attack it that way, some of those supplements will help, you know, keep that lower body fat set point um, year round. Yeah, man. And, and there's, there's two things I want to throw back at you um, to have you kind of talk about. First of all, um, well, you don't have to talk about this. It's kind of a statement. One of the big, big pieces here, like I don't want to lose the forest for the trees for our listeners because they need to realize one of the big reasons that you can stay as lean as you are is because you don't fuck around on the diet. Like you are, you are 99% year round. You've gotten past issues with food a long time ago. You maybe not even really had them, but a lot of listeners like they're going to have issues with food. They're going to have times they're not tracking worth a shit and they're just intuitively eating Guys, those are just excuses. Yes. If you're saying, oh, I can't maintain. Trust me, my fat ass was the guy saying a year ago, like, this is my body fat set point. No, I just didn't want to fucking work hard enough and track my food as closely as I should. That was just me making an excuse. Yep. So I'm actually going to push it to the limits, and that won't be an excuse. So guys, don't don't lose sight of that. Jason's spot on with eating. But the yeah, other thing- Yeah, even when I go out to dinner, like, I pick a healthy, tasty meal. Like, we went to BJ's on Friday- I got the cherry chipotle salmon, like, and they put their, their uh, calories. It's like 570 calories. It came with like rice pilaf, asparagus, and the glaze was amazing. And it was grilled and it tasted awesome. But I mean, it wasn't much food, but it was better than my shit I normally put together. But most people go out and they think they got to get two double cheeseburgers, uh, fries, you know, a side of this, and then they got to go eat an extra large milkshake. And then they got to go home and get the Reese's cups out. Like, I don't do that shit. Like that's, that's overeating. I just have a meal and I'm done. 
So yeah, and, and people that eat like that, you're not going to maintain a leaner physique. I don't no. give a fuck. Like it's no. just not. It's just not going to happen. So not unless you're thing, an outlier. If you, right. you know, there's a few outliers, and we all know those. But no, and it's not that I'm an outlier. I wasn't a fat kid, but I didn't walk around with abs when I started this whole endeavor. Sure. Uh, the other thing I want you to talk about is when people get pretty, pretty lean and it just fucking sucks to walk around like yes. that. I'm a big believer in, and I haven't been lean enough to test this yet, but I, I, I use injectable oil carn as well. You told me whenever I came to stay with you, you're like, dude, I'm able to maintain this lean physique and not feel like trash because yep. I'm constantly getting supplied with fat for fuel because that's how l carn works how yep. how important do you think that is to helping people walk around in that leaner physique they normally wouldn't be able to walk around yeah 100 percent. it's got to be because i don't eat a high fat diet i do eat a lot of efas i bet i take 20 um dha epa uh, fish oil tabs a day but my fats are 30 or lower and i feel great like my hrvs are normally pretty good i recover during the week um, but again, it's almost like, you know, when, when you're in ketosis and you feel awesome, but you don't have carbs and it's because your body's just running off its fat stores. Well, L-carnitine taps into those fatty acids to be driven into the mitochondria to, to drive the energy. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gotta be something along those lines that allows me to be able to do that. Cause I don't feel bad. And if I really had a bust ass, I could probably be ready in four weeks. I've got, you know, lines when I when I do my like side chest on my on my side chest and my glutes and stuff but I would give myself eight but my point is uh, I don't feel bad doing it um, but again you know fairness out to all the listeners I am on HRT so that does help um, 100% but yeah I think I think it has something to definitely do with that yeah and I think injectable carnitine is still going to be one of those things on the natural side of the sport because it's injectable people mm -hmm. are just going to shy away from it yes, because they, they are feel, they're going to feel like they're cheating which it's not yes. I mean Listen, if you take fucking vitamin B shots, whether you take it orally or a fucking shot from the doctor, it doesn't, it, you see what I'm saying? Like it's not, oh, yeah. it's not cheating guys, but still, no, I, I'm not going to beat that dead horse. I just, no, I mean, it, it's, it's, everyone has to make their own decisions on what they can sleep with at night, but you're 100%. It's literally just an amino acid. You're just bypassing the stomach, which tears most of it down. Yeah. Let's, let's finish up and let's, I, I don't want to leave this example out in the, even though it is an outlier, there are going to be a few people listening that need to hear this. Or if you're a coach or a trainer and you get someone like this and you're trying to help them grow, you need to understand there isn't, there is another side to this, not just the super fat side. There is an extreme lean individual out there that needs to put some fat on to actually grow yeah, and their yeah. body needs to grow. But it fights to constantly stay leaner. Like they have a hard time putting body fat on. And to me, yes. Jason, the struggle here is eating, especially yes. on digestion, because those people eating is a job and it's so hard on their digestion. What do you, what do you do to kind of help these people yeah. get their body fat up a little bit, yep. be able to grow? You're probably going to be like half of them out here. Once I say this, I'm like, I'm not doing that. But if someone is that stubborn, okay. And they just got that sinewy, like lean look year round. And, you know, you've worked calories up, you know, you've got them up 300 plus grams of protein, 500 carbs, 100 grams of fat. And, you know, they're already miserable and they just aren't getting anywhere. Three days a week of training, uh, more of like a hit style, like, like, you know, they say like mints are trained. Uh, you pull the volume way back and you start using sloppy cheat meals until like the scale starts doing something and their muscles start filling it out. It'll finally happen. So you can't be training five, six days a week with these people. Um, that's, that's the way, that's the stuff that I've seen work to get them going. Yeah. The other thing too is, and it's, it's tough with digestion when it comes to food, but sometimes yes. I've had, to, and I, I hate to tell people this, but sometimes they have to add in food that's just not so dense, like sweet potatoes and white potatoes and rice. And they have to fucking add a pop tart to their meals yes. because yes. anybody can eat a pop tart in about three bites and it's 40 yeah. carbs. I'm a big fan of grape juice or whatever juice you like. Um, it's, it's straight sugar to the, to the head, but you know, like it's, it's car, it's calories, it's carbs. And so, you know, it's going to, it's going to empty out really fast and then they don't really feel like they ate. So you can, now you can pound some food with it. Uh, so you can add juices to meals and really get the carb intake up six, seven, eight hundred very fast. 
Uh, the fats are what's going to slow them down, but you need some of that with that hard gainer to, to stop the carbs from being just burnt off so quickly. So that's where it gets a little tricky um, for the digestion. Personally, I'd rather see protein kind of go a little lower and just load them up on, you know, once they have enough protein, when your carbs are so damn high, you don't need, you know, more than one gram per pound as long as it's not being burned off. Uh, and I go with, you know, the, the carbs and the fats and then less training and um, some cheat meals here and there uh, to, to get it moving. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize too, like going high carb and then low to moderate fat on people like this, like the, the fat slow everything down. So they don't just burn right through the fucking carbs. I mean, it's, it's so hard. Um, it's so hard for some of these folks. And, and I've said it numerous times and I'll say it this way and we'll kind of end the show. Um, I would much rather have to be a little bit hungry and be a little on the fatter end and have to count my food and diet down than have to be somebody that has to try and eat six, 7,000 fucking calories yes. a day. Me too. Because Imagine going to the buffet. Everybody else is listening. They're like, fuck you. I want to eat like that. No, you don't. Go to the buffet and imagine feeling like that all day, every fucking day to try and gain muscle. I, you know, when I talk to people about my caloric intake, I sit around all day. My, my um, whoop band says I literally burn like on a high day, 2,200 calories. Well, I easily still get around 26, 2,700. So whether that whoop band's right or not, I know I'm in a surplus daily. And, um, I still have a little bit of hunger, like my food tastes good. And because I'm more mesomorphic, like I don't need a ton of food um, to grow. And so I've always said that I, I'm, I'm glad about that fact that I don't have to do that, you know, where you're shitting five times a day and your ass hurts and, you know, you, you have to <laughs> shovel in this food like it's an IV, you know, like I, and some guys are just so hardcore, they're going to do it. And I, a more power to them. I'm just, I'm, I'm glad that I, I am not, I'm not that guy. No, I agree. I'm going to put this to the test on my end because I I think I represent a large majority of of people out there that are somewhere in the middle. Um, I'm going to diet down another seven pounds off. And Jason, you saw my pictures. No one else has seen those. I just sent it the other day. I'm not going to be shredded at 200, um, but I'm going to hang on. I'm going to hang tight there for a little bit and kind of do this in blocks like we're talking about. Yep. I'm going to test my labs and then I'll probably push on down to, you know, maybe 193 and I'm going to see yep. what my body's going to be able to walk around on. Now, as Jason said, I'm on HRT as well. So that, that changes things. But if you're natural, if, if I'm myself and I'm natural and my blood work's okay, that's the main thing as I've got to measure blood work to make, yes. make sure labs are in a good place. Dude, is there, is there anything else you want to add? Any final thoughts to this for our listeners? You know, <laughs> At the end of the day, you have to be happy with yourself 365 days a year. You only get on stage so often. So, you know, I've found, and maybe this isn't going to be for you, but I've found that when I stopped worrying about that one day on stage, maybe, you know, once every 18 months, and I worried more about how I looked in the gym and, and how I performed and how my health was and how I looked in my clothes. It, it all clicked a lot better for me than when I just was always like, oh, I got I to gotta push this food. I got to get big. I got I to gotta do this. I got to I get ready for this, for this event on, on you know, March 27, two years from, the, from now, you know. Um, and once I kind of got out of that, I didn't really feel like I needed to, to pound food and do all these different things. I did more where I was timing things and looking to maximize my body while it stayed in a nice range. And as long as you're able to perform well, and your hormones are in a good spot. I think I'm all for staying on the leaner side. But like you said, if you're a natural athlete and your testosterone is down to 150, uh, but you know you like your look, but you're miserable and you, you can't get a freaking erection, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to increase your fats, see if that helps, and it's probably gonna bring your body fat up some. Um, so you know, th- you know, even though I know I can give the recipe and the, um, uh, the way you walk yourself up to a, you know, a higher caloric intake with a lower body fat, you have to make sure that you're performing well um, as well, too, and, and watch those hormones. That yeah, would be my final I, say. I, I, I don't want to add because that was fucking perfect. Um, really, I mean, you talk, I'm going to steal this quote from you. You talk about cracking your own code. I think mm-hmm. that people need to take what you just said and be patient and work on their their life physique your physique that you're going to walk around in for life not just on stage and you really need to work on cracking your own code because we can't crack it for you 
we can't for our clients, but it takes a long fucking time for us to crack it and figure you guys out. Um, so man, I mean that what you just said was a very powerful, I know it's going to slap some people in the face. They're going to be like, fuck, he's right. Um, great way to end the show. Speaking of ending the show, guys, this is the time hit pause. We're going to give away that one year prep with me in the next four weeks. So hit pause, hit those stars, leave a review, and um, we're going to be picking winners in the next week. So, man, this is a great episode. We've got some more good ones lined up. So I'm going to let you get back to your Sunday, Jason, for myself. Yeah. yeah. And, Jason, we're out of here. Thanks, guys. See ya.